This is a visualization of all of the augments in Black Ops 6 Zombies. Those are special upgrades that you can use to upgrade your perks, field upgrades, and ammo mods into totally different versions of their base functionalities. In this video, we're going to go through this blog post, which has a whole load of info on all of the augments in the game. It's got info on specific perks. We're also going to be taking a look at stuff to do with the tacticals in the game, the gobble gums in the game as well. There's the launch gobble gums in here too. So there's a huge amount of info on the way. So buckle up, subscribe to the channel if you're new and we will get started. So augments are unlockable gameplay advantages. You can apply to every perk of cola, ammo mod and field upgrade in the game. There are 108 augments at launch and that is six for each perk, six for each ammo mod and six for each field upgrade, which is I think a decent number to start with. And those are broken down into three majors and three minors. Now there are a bunch of images that they've got in here. Like I showed you a few a second ago, there's the one for Juggernog. We're going to address those in a second, but first we just need to ingest some of the information about how we get these things. So let's start with researching and choosing augments. To unlock the full potential of your loadouts, you've got to research augments. This unlocks at player level 11. So I guess we're going to have to grind out a couple of matches is first before we can get progress on this. You then research and unlock individual augments and they can be chosen before the start of the match for each individual perk, ammo and field upgrade. And to start doing that research, you just select which item you'd like to research in the menu and then start earning XP in game and that will progress you towards unlocking the augment. So presumably that means that on this screen, you go to research augments and you just choose the one that you want to work on next. And I confirmed with the Treyarch team when I spoke to them personally a few months ago that when you finish one augment research item, it will flip over to another augment so you don't sort of lose progress in your match, which is a problem that we've had in previous CODs before where you've had to like leave the game, set a new thing to start working on and then jump back into the game and it's just annoying. That's gone now. As I mentioned a second ago, each item has two augment slots. One is major, the other is minor. Major augments have a substantial advantage and minors offer a limited advantage. Now they do say this, which I think is kind of weird. It says, if you've played a particular role in your squad, so I guess they're talking historically, like as a healer, you may already have a good idea of which augments you should search for, unlock, and employ, along with other related power-ups to optimize your team's dynamics. The fact that they've said this here makes me worry a little bit that if you already have an idea of which augments you should look for, that means that the things the augments do are already familiar. They're going to be like, revive a teammate a bit faster, or like get a speed boost after you've revived a teammate. But that's just basically repackaging systems that we already had in previous games. It's like saying, let's take away a feature and then we'll say that it's a new feature when we give it back to you. That's not really how this should work, I feel like. So if that's what I'm correctly kind of sussing out from what I'm reading here, I'm not so much of a fan of it. Just a, a subjective little comment about the way that they're rolling this out. So let's assess whether or not that's the case with Jug and then also with the energy mine here as well, just as sort of two test cases. So it's got this initial area here. It says unlock six total augments to begin this research. So you actually need to start elsewhere. So there is a kind of progression tree through other augments first. First, and it looks like they'll unlock in this order. So to start with, deal bonus damage while health is low. Okay, that's actually pretty cool. Slightly increase max health with Jug. So that's just going to be an extra 50 health. Hardened plates. Armor plates have more damage mitigation. That's pretty huge if you're a big armor fan. I mean, if they're just stronger across the board, that's a pretty big deal. Turtle Shell, armor acts as a shield on your back, completely absorbing damage to your back. Oh, damn. Okay. No damage mitigation when hit from the front, of course, but that's pretty good. Okay. Durable plates slightly increase armor durability. Okay. So that's interesting that there's durable plates and there's more damage mitigation. I actually mistook this for this when I was reading it out earlier. So this is actually just you being hit through the armor, whereas this is the sustenance of the armor itself, the durability of the armor. And then when an armor plate breaks, nearby normal enemies are stunned for a short time. Huh. So I'd say none of these are like totally revolutionary, apart from Turtle Shell, which might be, but they're all pretty cool. I'm actually a fan of these Jug Augments. I think that's a pretty good start. Let's see what they're like for Energy Mine here. Frequency Boost. Increase Detonation Count and Duration of Energy Mine, so you get an extra mine. Two, the Energy Mine will split into three mines that scatter and detonate one each time, so 
that's a little bit of a sort of thematic gameplay change as to how it works. So I'm in favor of those sorts of things. This increases max charges by one. So I guess this wasn't actually max charges. Again, I was mistaken there. And that's going to be something that Treyarch's going to need to be really careful of with the way that they word these. I don't think they've made any mistakes here, but people are going to really misinterpret their stuff. So, I mean, you guys are going to have to come check out my guides if you want full breakdowns of how it works once the game's out. But yeah, so this is, this is just actually the number of detonations of each mine, whereas this is charges. Although I guess detonations could be how many mines you place, but then charges could be how many times you can use the whole thing. Again, we'll see. Instead of detonating, enemy mines become a turret that shoots targets one at a time. Could be huge for a strat or could be very boring. We'll see. Energy mine attracts nearby normal enemies for a short time, so it acts like a monkey bomb. And then three energy mines will float around you, detonating when an enemy is nearby. That sounds... Like, it's probably not that useful, but also, yeah, I mean, I'm kind of here for it, man. This is cool. The fact that you can change your gameplay up in this way, I'm, I'm really in favor of it. So then they've got this big section that we can talk about here with perks. And I guess they're actually going through and just telling you what every single perks augments are. So we're going to just look at all of them now. So we've looked at Jug already, right? And this is what this part of the menu looks like when you're equipping them. And I think this looks really pretty. So I, I'm in favor of this. I think this is really cool. But if we move on to Stam, we've got Free Faller, Immune unit to fall damage. Okay. That really should be PhD's job, but I guess that can be in STAM. I guess it sort of makes sense because STAM's about navigating your environment. You've got increased tax sprint duration and walk faster while aiming. Now, one of the things I think they are going to really maybe struggle with this year is the fact that some people are going to just have to use certain augments. Like if you're going to high rounds, for example, are you going to be able to get away with having less tax sprint duration? Probably not because of the fact that those sprinters are going to come at you at that speed regardless. So I, I, I worry that that's going to become like a default choice, but also remains to be seen, right? Maybe you'll have enough tax sprint anyway. In miners, we've got while tax sprinting, projectile damage is reduced. Huh, I think that's good because then if you're like running away and you're getting hit from behind, it's going to do less damage. So that's good, I guess. Use equipment while sprinting. Cool. Gain a speed boost after your equipment kills an enemy. Oh, that could be fun. Making a build that is like a hot foot build. <laughs> like, I can't wait to make builds in this game, man. It's gonna be so much fun. Then we've got Speed Cola, which at base lets you reload weapons faster and replay armor faster. It's majors. Field upgrades recharge a bit faster. Huh, okay. Speed makes sense. Reload speed is even faster. Okay. I like the idea of just putting speed on steroids. And then weapon magazines are slowly refilled over time. Huh, that's kind of cool. And it also could lead to some really interesting strats if there's ways that you can, for example, get more damage if you don't reload for a long time or something from another augment, like I'm starting to think about the ways these could chain together. Maybe we could actually do a stream sometime in the next few days where we sort of theory craft putting all of these augments together. If you'd like that, leave me a comment telling me and we'll make it happen. That's actually where all these people's names came from because all of these folks were gifting members and gifting subs on Twitch during my last stream. So like LTX, he was gifting hella subs to people. So I put them on the board as like a, a thank you to everybody that's there. But yeah, I'd love to do another stream doing some theory crafting in the next few days. That could be really fun. Then we've got the mystery box settles faster. Meh, who cares? <laughs> Swap weapons faster. That could be useful. And deploy equipment faster. Okay, none of these are really speaking to me, but... That's okay. Then on dead shot, we have further increased critical damage. See, stuff like that, I fear everybody is going to use that. That is such a core fundamental part of the game. And like, that is the point of dead shot as well. Like, no one really cares about the ADS precision nearly as much as they care about the increased critical damage. But let's see, maybe I'll be, maybe I'll be mistaken if some of these other ones are really good. Deal double critical damage if an enemy is at full health. Ooh. So if you're using a sniper build, this could be OP so long as your shot is killing them because otherwise you're then going to do less damage and you'd maybe just want the increased damage on every shot so okay i can i can I, I can see what they're doing there that's good i'm i'm impressed by this so far i really am critical hits have a chance to add a bullet to your magazine okay so a sniper is not going to want to use this right but like an smg or something so long as you're hitting in the head you could never have to reload that could be pretty sick Okay, I, I thought this was the only one that was ever going to be used. I'm wrong. <laughs> I'm just straight up wrong. I'm, I'm getting really excited about this. This is cool. Increase damage to armor pieces. Okay. Reduce hip fire spread. Okay. Reduce gun movement while performing advanced movement. That's a confusing sentence. It's kind of weird, but fine. Let's move on. Quick revive. Major augments. Reviving an ally allows them to keep all their perks. Cool. Okay. 
It's quite nice. I wouldn't say that's a major though, but quite nice, I suppose. Maybe if you have a strat that requires you to be going down lots, then maybe that could be OP. Equip exchange. Killing an enemy while downed will revive you and remove quick revive. This can be done up to three times. So this is solo self reses. Kind of. That's interesting. It's annoying that it's killing the enemy while downed, but still, this is this is cool. And then Dying Wish. On lethal damage, become immune to all damage for two seconds and keep one health. Quick Revive is removed on use. Interesting. I mean, this is just an extra life. So I, I feel like everybody is going to use this one because that's OP. That is strong as hell. It is quite simply an extra life. And you can just keep rebuying Quick Revive because there's no there's no limit like there is here. So yeah, I mean, everyone's going to be using that. Reviving an ally increases both of your movement speeds for a short time. Reviving an ally heals you to full health. Okay, fine, I guess. And then increase your time in last stand. Yeah, maybe these will be useful. I don't know. Let's look at Elemental Pop. If a weapon has an ammo mod applied, Elemental Pop will only activate that one. Huh, that's really cool. It's not like OP necessarily, but for creating specific builds, that is a big deal. Next one, enemies that hit you have a chance to trigger an ammo mod. Okay, interesting. Definitely a lot less exciting than this one to me in terms of build potential, but still cool. And then reloading creates an electric damage discharge that damages and stuns nearby normal enemies. Wait, so this is just elect- It is literally electric cherry inside elemental pop. Huh, okay. The emptier the magazine, the stronger the damp. They just straight up put electric cherry. <laughs> what the hell? Okay. So I guess we're never getting electric cherry in Black Ops 6. That's fine. Minor augments. Vulnerable bean? Oh, vul vulnera bean. Okay. Slightly increase enemy elemental weakness damage. Okay. That's kind of meh. But again, for a build, could be interesting. Equipment can also trigger random ammo mods. That's kind of cool. And slightly reduce all ammo mod cooldowns. I think that's probably the biggest deal there. Next, PhD Flopper. Gravity MD. Just falling from heights creates explosions. Okay, so that's just falling instead of having to like dive into it. That's pretty awesome. That's actually a really, really big quality of life change for PhD Flopper. Tax Sprint knocks down enemies. Oh my god, I can be Sam B from Dead Island 1. Oh, that is so exciting. If that's good, bro. Only base zombies, but still, that is... Although that's... Hmm. Does that kind of kill some of the core zombies' experience of getting stuck in a horde of zombies? Like, is, is this a crutch? Is it too friendly to noobs? Hmm. I think it's cool, but that's weird. The idea of you just being able to push past the zombie in a new way. Hmm, that's weird. That's exciting. That's weird. Sliding into enemies triggers explosions. Yeah, meh. Become immune to environmental damage while sliding. Immune to environmental damage. Interesting. I wonder what that might look like. Slightly reduce height and distance requirements for explosions. Meh. And sliding distance and speed are increased. Meh. 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 Next up, melee macchiato. So this replaces your gun butt with a deadly punch. All melee attacks are slightly faster. Okay whatever. Actually, Melee Macchiato was kind of slow for me when I was playing Terminus, so maybe that is a big deal. Melee attacks heal a small amount of your health. Ooh, interesting. You can punch, hit, and then your punch can hit multiple enemies at once. Ooh, it's a shame that these can't combo. All right, what else we got? Back pedal speed is increased after a successful melee attack. Huh. So you can go bop and then you can quickly scuttle back. That's pretty cool. Your punch can one hit kill normal enemies for longer. Should it be able to just do that indefinitely? Or does that make Melee, melee Macchiato too OP? Not sure. We'll see, I guess, when the game comes out. Melee kills reload a portion of your held weapon. Interesting. Okay. I'm vibing with these, man. And this is a really cool screenshot. So yeah, cool. Next, we've got ammo mods. So your primary and melee weapons can have ammo mods. They're obtained via salvage now, and only one ammo mod can be applied at a given time. The ammo mods at launch are Brain Rock, Cryo Freeze, Dead Wire, Napalm Burst, and one new one, which is Shadow Rift. Bullets deal shadow damage. Each bullet has a chance to spawn a black hole if striking normal or special zombies, warping nearby zombies away, and dropping some from the air at high speed. This is when you unlock them. So straight away, level 6, 14, 27, 44. And then going through the augments again, for Brain Rot, the charmed enemy has a chance to turn other enemies. Cool. Interesting they're calling it charmed. I've never seen them do that before. The charmed enemy distracts nearby normal and special enemies for a short time. So the charmed enemy is a monkey bomb now. And Brain Rot can charm elites. Okay. Brain Rot duration is slightly increased. Okay. Meh. Brain Rot cooldown is slightly reduced. Okay, meh. And then charmed enemies explode at the end of Brain Rot's duration, dealing toxic damage. That's pretty cool. These two, they feel boring 
they feel like they just didn't have any other ideas. And so they were like, yeah, we'll just make it duration and and that'll do, right? Uh, I think if there were lots of these across all of the ammo mods, for example, people would say like, oh, Treyarch's been lazy there. I don't want to say Treyarch's lazy. Treyarch's working incredibly hard on this stuff, uh, but they're certainly not inspired. Let's say that, right? And some of these other ones do feel pretty inspired. So just not my cup of tea, I suppose. Hopefully this is not the case for all of these other ammo mods here. So cryo freeze, frost damage, and you can slow enemies. Cryo freeze can slow elites. Enemies that are killed while frozen may leave a cloud that slows enemies. Okay, fine. And enemies are frozen in place. The extension here, slightly increase the slow duration. And yeah, some kind of dull ones. Slightly increase the slow duration. Meh. Slightly increase damage to frozen enemies. Yeah, okay, that's that one's, that one's acceptable. And slightly increase your chance for cryo freeze to activate. Meh. Kind of dull. I don't know. I'm not feeling it for the ammo mods nearly as much. With Deadwire, it's electric damage and you can stun a normal or special. So the stunned enemy can spread the stun to other enemies. Deadwire can stun elites and a bolt of lightning strikes from above, stunning all normal and specials in the area. Okay. Yeah. Kind of cool. Deadwire deals slightly more damage. Meh. Deadwire cooldown is slightly reduced. Meh. The stun and electric field last longer. Okay, very boring. Very boring. Not giving me a lot of inspiration for like, oh, I want to build and theorycraft in this direction, which is unfortunate. Napalm burst sets zombies on fire and it can give them a burn effect over time, which deals damage over time. So burning elites. Yep, fine. Increase burn effect damage. Meh. And burn enemies explode on death, spreading the fire to nearby enemies. Okay, similar to the brain rot one, except it's a toxic cloud in brain rot and here it's just fire that spreads. For minor augments, increase the burn duration. Each damage tick has a small chance to spread to a nearby enemy. That one's kind of cool. And initial burn effect deals more damage. Okay, these ones aren't as interesting across the board, but let's see if Shadow Rift is an exception. So like we said, it launches enemies into the air. It can activate on elites. So that means you can potentially suck up an abomination and drop it from the sky. That'd be pretty cool. This says warp one enemy that deals shadow damage to others. What does that mean? Warp one enemy? Huh? I don't really understand what this means. Let me know if you can explain it below. Enemies that are dropped from porters will explode on contact with the ground. Yep. Th that, that might be interesting, I guess. Shadow Rift cooldowns reduced. Meh. Dropped enemies will fall on other enemies. Wait, you're telling me they don't drop on other enemies unless you have this enabled? Why? <laughs> Especially because, like, you're going to really need this if you've got this. I don't know. This whole AAT just feels pointless right now. Maybe it will change in game. Maybe we'll see. But for the time being, I'm like kind of misunderstanding maybe what the point is of this Shadow Rift. It feels weird. Singularity's lethal radius is increased and can kill more enemies. Yeah, I guess that's good. And then we've got field upgrades. So you can change these during a match now and your cooldown will be reset if you do so. You've got Aether Shroud, Frenzied Guard, Dark Flare, Healing Aura, and Energy Mine, where Dark Flare is new. This is when you unlock all of them. Of course, Aether Shroud is at the end. That's classic. So starting with Aether Shroud. Nearby players are also cloaked. Yo. Oh, that's big. That's really cool. Okay. See, that's what I'm talking about. That's much more inspired than some of those other ones we were seeing for the ammo types. Burst Dash, Warp Forward, killing all normal enemies in your path. So this is going to mean that the criticism that they faced in Cold War, where people didn't want the warp forward, is fixed because now you can warp forward if you want to put this on or you can just put a different one on. So that's good. Void Sheath lets you swap to your dedicated melee weapon as it's imbued with dark ether energy. Kills allow you to stay in ether shroud. Bro, you could be in ether shroud for ages, just like hacking and slashing. The zombies just don't have a clue what's going on. That's, that's cool. Inspired. These ones are good. Activation instantly reloads your currently held weapon. Weird but cool. Increased charges by one. That's what everybody's going to use. And duration is significantly increased. Meh. Whatever. Having more charges, infinitely more important. Okay, onto Dark Flare. You can significantly increase the duration. Boring. The beam is replaced with a sphere that damages nearby enemies as it travels. What? The ball detonates at the end of its duration? Guess that's cool? And then the beam heals and revives other players on contact? Yo, that's a big deal. Okay, interesting. Broad beam. Significantly increases the size of the beam. Cool. The beam slows enemies. Meh. Okay. And increases max charges. Interesting. Hmm. I don't really know what to think of this yet. When I was using it, when I played the game, it was kind of mid, to be honest. I don't know. Maybe with these, it will kind of change things up a little bit. Frenzied guard. Does what we all expect, repairs armor to full and forces all enemies in the area to temporarily target you and armor takes all damage during that time. Teammates can also repair armor from kills while near you. So I guess that's while active. They should really say like while active 
because this is while frenzied. And if this is only while frenzied, that's very different. Whereas if it's all the time, if they can just repair armor from kills while near you, that's huge. So yeah, I would like a while frenzied to be added here, please, Treyarch. Trigger an explosion on activation. Cool. Normal enemies that melee the player are damaged and knocked down. Cool. And then while frenzied, use ammo from stock. Nice. Then repair more armor per kill. Cool. Increase frenzied guard duration. Boring. And on activation, repair all nearby teammates' armor to full. Huh. Also pretty cool, actually. You can kind of save a teammate that way. I like that. I will say there are quite a lot of teammate-related things. Teammate stuff is not going to be useful for solo players, so it's kind of a shame. Next up, Healing Aura, which heals all nearby players immediately. If this doesn't have a freaking radius that specifically shows me whether they're in the radius for it or not, I'm uninstalling the game and I'm throwing it out the window. Okay, I'm not, not doing that at all. But please, for the love of God, Treyarch, if it has to be nearby players, tell us who or is or is not nearby. I am begging you. Okay. All affected players have their health regeneration delay reduced and their rate of healing increased temporarily. Okay, that's cool. The beams and their healing effects persist for a short time after leaving the area of effect. Okay, cool. And revived players keep all perks on their bleed out bar. So there's a little bit of overlap here with the other stuff that we've seen. Not a huge fan of there being overlap, but at the same time, it's not a particularly consequential one. So I guess it's fine. It just means it's much more likely that you're going to just end up using one of these two. Uh, here we've got... Affected player damage is slightly increased. Cool. Healed players have damage slightly mitigated for a short time. Also cool. And on activation, special and elite enemies are stunned while normal enemies are knocked down. Okay. So it just sort of is a AoE knockback. These are a little bit more inspired, so this is good. Energy mine we have already seen, obviously. So we're just going to skip past that. And we're going to talk about match preparation because they've changed this. Okay, it's been updated. So this is what it looks like. This is your sort of loadout here. Dedicated melee weapon. Your primary or secondary can be any of these categories. ARs, SMGs, shotguns, LMGs, marksmen, sniper, pistols, and launchers. And then you've got your second loadout weapon is a close quarters armament with no ranged ordnance. Why do they have to say it that way, bro? It's a melee weapon. Then there's field upgrade, which they've already talked about. And you earn them by eliminating enemies, not with the passage of time. Look for a complete list of field upgrades later in this blog. Well, it was earlier, so... That's a small mistake there. Then there's tactical equipment, limited quantity items that range from healing to disorientation. We'll see that in a second. Lethals and then gobblegums. Crack your teeth as well as the skulls of the undead with a variety of custom gobblegum packs. You pick a pack to bring with you and each pack contains five different types of single-use gobblegums. During a match, you access them via the machine and I mean, we already know how that works, so that's fine. The primary melee weapons you can choose from, along with Gunsmith, etc., is covered in the Weapon Details blog. Okay, available here, except there's no link. And ma Mastery Badges note, almost every weapon and equipment in your Zombies loadout has their own medal challenge, and all individual equipment have special sets of Mastery Badges to complete. Cool. Another note about Tacticals, your loadout allows you to choose one of five. Two additional Tacticals are only accessible in-game via ground loot. So we've got Concussion Smokes, Stims, Decoys, Shock Charges, Symbol Monkeys, and Casimirs. Stims being in Zombies, still so weird to me. The war zonification of Zombies is, is wild. So this is what they look like. Okay, fine. Concussions, slow enemy movement. Smoke Grenades, what's the point of these? They block vision and automated targeting systems. Is that going to matter? Maybe for an Easter egg step, I guess. Combat Stim that heals wounds and refreshes tax sprint. Okay. Grenade that simulates footsteps and gunfire. Sticks to surfaces. Fine. And Electrical Trap that sticks to surfaces and electrocute enemies. That's the Shock Charge. Fine. Then for lethals, we've got frag, sticky, C4, thermal grenade, impact, molotov, blast, trap. My god, there's quite a lot of these, aren't there? No gas grenade. Notice that? I guess, well, unless they've changed it so that thermal grenades are gas grenades now. But yeah, gas grenades were, were a big thing in the past and that's not a thing anymore. So there's basic frags, there's basic stickies, C4 works how you'd expect. Thermal grenades create a large fuel air cloud that explodes after a short duration. Interesting. So it doesn't sound like that's how the gas grenades work. That sounds different. Then impacts are precision grenades that explode on impact. Molotovs are molotovs. Blast traps are planted explosive devices that detonates when enemies come near. Huh. So it's like a bouncing Betty. And then combat axe is a combat axe. And then we've got score streaks. So you can spend salvage on these and they'll also drop as ground loot. So armor, like we said, RCXDs, RC card that emits small ether blasts. So that's why this is purple here. It's not just a, a, an explosion. It's sort of a duration thing. The LDBR, which is a missile bombardment in a targeted area. And then Hellstorm, which is a long range missile with break and boost capabilities and secondary missiles. 
So then there's the support stuff, which we're looking at here. Chopper gunners are back. So centuries, 1500, the mangler cannon, which we've seen gameplay of, the chopper gunner, which I just mentioned, and the mutant injection, and then the self revive. When downed, you can revive yourself and you have a max of three, which is a new change for this year. And then it's Gobblegum's time. So, whew, there's a lot in here. It's interesting that there's this. There's like a little cheeky little Mr. Peaks Gobblegum. Hmm. I want to know what that is. Maybe that's a whimsical, I guess. They produce amusing results that don't affect gameplay. Oh, no, these are the whimsicals. Newtonian and indigestion. So what is that? I feel like I should click it and it should be like a... A, a link to a secret page or something. I wonder what it is. This is the complete list of all gobbles at launch. Killjoy, stock option, who's keeping score, cashback. Bro, these are so familiar. So they're really bringing in a lot of familiar gobbles here. Anywhere but here, exit strategy. Okay, interesting. Soda fountain, profit sharing, wall to wall clearance, free fire, on the house, nowhere but here, idle eyes, wunderbar, hidden power. So let's take a look at what some of these things do. So stock option, Ammo is taken from your stockpile. Killjoy spawns an insta-kill. Anywhere but here, teleports to random location. Cashback spawns a max ammo. Temporal now activates on next time-based power-up. So that's really good. That's a really good change. Power-ups last longer. Shields up. Armor is twice as strong. Wow. Pretty damn powerful. Arsenal accelerator. Charge the player's field upgrade faster. Then you've got epics. Interestingly, some of these are not in the progression here. So nowhere but there. Instantly teleport to a random downed player. Yo, huge. And instantly revive nearby players. Also huge. Okay, cool. Spawns a double points power up. Free fire. Firing a weapon consumes no ammo, but doesn't work with wonder weapons. Boo. Soda fountain. Next perk purchased gives an additional random perk. Profit sharing. A portion of the essence you earn is also received by nearby players. That's going to be so good for speedrunning strats. Respin cycle respins the weapon in the mystery box after it's settled to one of equal or higher rarity. And exit strategy has activate exfil vote immediately, reduce zombie spawns during exfil. Huh. So you can just get out of dodge without having to go to a higher round. With idle eyes, all zombies ignore players and stand idle. Cool. Wall power, the next weapon bought on the wall comes pack punched, as expected. Crate power, the next weapon taken from the crate, or the mystery box, sorry, becomes pack punched, as expected. Phoenix up, revive all teammates and they keep their perks. Cool. On the house, spawn a perk can power up. Cool. Wall to wall clearance. Wall buys cost 10 essence. Cool. And immolation spawns a fire sale. Nice. And then there's ultras and whimsicals. So, ultras, perkaholic gives the player all perks on the map. <coughs> near death, revive or be revived simply by being near other players. Revived players keep all their perks. Hidden power, upgrade your currently held weapon to legendary rarity. That's a really nice one because upgrading your weapon rarity is just a pain in the ass, man. Wunderbar. The next weapon from the mystery box will be a wonder weapon, guaranteed wonder weapon, gobblegum, and raindrops spawn all the core power-ups. Interesting, it's only the core. Give me the others, Treyarch. It's a, it's a, an ultra, right? Give me the others. But yeah, spawn the core power-ups. And then we've got Newtonian, zombies killed fall upwards, and indigestion, zombies killed experience extreme flatulence. Lovely. And then we've got operator information. And this is a gorgeous screenshot. So we've got the gunsmith. If you've built a weapon in a different mode, it will appear here with all attachments, functional and cosmetic. And so you can easily add it to your loadout. Then there's weapon select wonder weapon. Along with gunsmith, loadout and augments, any wonder weapons you've previously unlocked. Wonder weapons you've unlocked. That's such a weird sentence. Along with any associated skins. A display tier. Yeah, there's Wonder Weapon skins now. This menu is simply for you to choose the preferred skin for your Wonder Weapon before obtaining it during a match. Okay, that's a, a really weird way to phrase that, but I guess that's fine. It's just for you to pick which skin you want to put on your Wonder Weapon. But why are they talking about unlocking it in this way? Like the base version of it? Don't know. And then you've got the dedicated crew. So that is Weaver, Carver, Gray, and Maya. In Zombies, there is a single operator menu with dedicated crew operators flagged. Okay. How are they flagged? They just have a slightly different background. Oh, and they say it here as well. Okay. So they've got like a little label for it and they're going to have a different background. I'd love for them to like glow or something, Treyarch. I think that would be a really cool addition. Make it really obvious for people. I think that's really important. Like you're going to the lengths to put them in the game in this way. Help people find that, right? You're encouraged to play as one of these four characters in Zombies for Enhanced Story. Yep, cool. And then there's progression. So in the barracks menu, you can confirm the following. Your player level progression is your main focus, levels 1 to 55. Then there's challenges, okay, as expected. Then you can customize things, ensure other players know exactly what you've unlocked and during your time playing Zombies. Okay, so you can sort of show this off. And then there's audio logs, documents, and artifacts you've discovered. And if you found everything, you can see them there. And you can read and tell again 
and listen to them again in the menu as well. Good. That's a good that's a good thing to have coming back. And then there's your combat record, medal collection, and your worldwide leaderboard ranking. And it sounds like that's all coming at launch, which is good. Sometimes we don't get launch combat records, so this is good. This was huge. I'm about to collapse, but there's actually even more stuff here that we haven't covered. Right at the top of this, there's new screenshots of Terminus. There's new screenshots of Liberty Falls as well. Like, there's changes to the Liberty Falls aura. If you want to see all of this stuff and, like, the new HUD, etc., click the video that I've linked on screen right now, and you'll go right there and get even more Zombies Intel.